Hi, and welcome to another episode of Around the Neighborhood with me, Scott McMahon. This is a show about the quest for fun, history, and mystery in our backyard. And today we'll be headed back to another Wednesday at the Willamette Summer Market. But before we do, some of you know that I am a big chocolate chip cookie fan. In fact, the other day, it was National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> that got me wondering, what is the history of the chocolate chip cookie? Well, let's take a trip through the Wayback Machine and find out. Believe it or not, the creation of the chocolate chip cookie is an American invention. Back in 1924, a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield attended the Framingham State Normal School Department of Household Arts. That's a mouthful. Anyway, Ruth received her culinary degree from the school, and then in 1930, along with her husband, they purchased a building in Whitman, Massachusetts. They turned this building into a restaurant called the Toll House Inn Restaurant, and it was at her restaurant that she served an amazing amount of food to all the visiting guests, including Senator John F. Kennedy. One of these delicious items was then a thin butterscotch nut cookie that was served with the ice cream. Legend has it that Ruth Graves Wakefield ran out of either nuts or baker's chocolate, which melts and makes chocolate drop cookies. Anyway, in a desperate act of improvising, Ruth chopped up some Nestle semi-sweet chocolate bars into her cookie mix, hoping that they would melt, but they didn't. And that's how the chocolate chip cookie was invented. That was the legend to make it sound cooler than the reality, which was that Ruth was a very smart an inventive culinary artist who was experimenting with several new options to add to the cookie ice cream combo. So the reality is that hard work and the trials and testing is how the chocolate chip cookie was invented. But who wants to write about hard work when you're selling a legend? When Ruth published her best-selling cookbook, Toll House Tried and True Recipes, the chocolate chip cookie was originally called the Toll House Chocolate Crunch Cookie. The crunch comes from the crispy, thin cookie dough that was supposed to be an option from the thin butterscotch nut, butterscotch, butterscotch nut cookie that was served with the ice cream originally. Ruth's chocolate crunch cookies were a huge hit among the local residents. And interest in this special cookie went national when Ruth's recipe was featured on the Betty Crocker Cooking School of the Air, which is a nationally syndicated radio show at the time. Now, Betty Crocker, by the way, is a fictitious character created by General Mills, as opposed to the real person that Ruth was. The popularity of the chocolate crunch cookie exploded the sale of Nestle semi-sweet bars. Nestle approached Ruth with the option to buy her recipe in order to put them in all the semi-sweet packaging, as well as buy the brand name Toll House. All this for one dollar and a lifetime of chocolate. Ruth accepted, and that's what she did sold the recipe for a dollar, and got a lifetime of chocolate for her restaurant. Nestle started to sell the semi-sweet chocolate bars as pre-cut chunks to help bakers more easily break up the chocolate for the cookie mix. Eventually, they would produce small bites, referred to as morsels, and it wasn't until later that they became known as chips. And that's how the chocolate chip cookie came to be. During World War II, the popularity of the chocolate chip cookie increased as GIs were requesting that their families send them some in their care packages. Other chocolate companies and baking companies got into the act with Betty Crocker offering pre-made cookie dough and chocolate chips already mixed in. And Nabisco would release Chips Ahoy, which happens to be the second most popular pre-made cookie behind the Oreo. Speaking of cookies, although I don't have a chocolate chip cookie shirt, I am wearing my fortune cookie shirt, and many people believe it's an American invention. It is sort of, but recently an article came out revealing the origins of the fortune cookie came from Japan, known as the fortune cracker. And speaking of World War II, as part of the Japanese internment camps, Japanese American businesses were forced to close down, and that's when the Chinese took over the cookie baking demand that was left by the void of the Japanese companies not producing any and thus became the evolution of the Chinese-American fortune cookie. Sorry, a little sidetrack there. Anyway, back to the chocolate chip cookie, which is the most popular and the most profitable of all cookies in the world. And the cookie industry is worth more than $38 billion globally. $38 billion, and Ruth sold her recipe for a dollar. 
In honor of National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day and Ruth Gray's Wakefield, it's time to head to the market and get as many different variations of the chocolate chip cookie as possible. So here we go. going? Well, last time we was here, what, you guys weren't here last Wednesday. No, we weren't here last Wednesday. But we got the garlic. Okay. Oh my god. This thing had so much flavor and then like, like it was so good. Yeah. It was so, so good. Holy yeah. Ingredients. Yeah. Well, well done. You want anything else? Uh, I might, I might get some later. I'm not too okay. sure. All What's right. the second favorite? The, our, like our second best seller? Yeah. Probably the spicy. Okay. Yeah. We got another one? I have a new Hi. life. Well, not now. She's been with me for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. This is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Yeah, every week there's a new one pops up. <laughs> you know, people like to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> hi, you guys. Hi. How are you? Just saying hi. Oh. And always checking in. No chatter, right? No. Okay, it's good. <laughs> hi, you guys. Hello. Hey, look what I'm carrying. Yeah. Bag. So did you know that yesterday was National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day? Oh really? So I'm here to buy some chocolate chip cookies. Uh, but let's take a look at the variations again. Oh yes. Let's see, you have your oatmeal chocolate chip. Yeah, we have oatmeal chocolate chip. We have a salted chocolate chip, M&M, &M, and then a regular. Mm -hmm. And then we have a chocolate, oh we don't have our chocolate chips going today, sorry. Okay. Make it this Real quick. That um, Nutella puff that you made, oh my god, it's so good, it's so good, that was a good I kind of switch it out, you know, if, I, if I, I don't see that it sells too much, at, you know, I'll, I'll wait a couple of weeks, I'll bring it back out, trying to like give it a little bit of variety, so yeah. this goes, I switch out the flavors, I don't bring all of my flavors, but we did bring the truffles, I did, oh, we got some did balls. make them yesterday, alright, alright, yep, well, here. I'm here. We're gonna get some uh, box of chocolate six chip truffle. banana bread. What? Ew, that's chocolate chip. <laughs> oh my god. I'm thinking of all the chocolate chips. So let's go ahead. I will get myself uh, two chocolate chips. Two chocolate chips. A salted chocolate chip. A chocolate chip salted, salted caramel. caramel. <laughs> and then I will get uh, a box of six of your truffles. Okay. Because that's where it all started. It all started with our truffle balls. It sure did. Very all right, thank you. Okay. Hey, how are you guys? Well, good. Look at this. This smells delicious. Yes. This is neat. Is this a new summer that's citrus? A, yeah, it's a lemonade. Oh, you finally got your lemonade in. Yeah. You finally did it. Well done. Hey, how are you, sir? Philippe, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, nice to see you again. So what do we do? We just have regular. Um... Yeah, so we have uh, regular, like the sweet and salty, and then we have our caramel. Oh, so you can make caramel. Yeah. yeah. We okay. Have caramel today. That's uh, more on the sweet side, and then we have our cheesy popcorn. Oh yeah. So we have three different flavors. All right. Can we? Can I order up a, a caramel? Yeah. Yeah. So do I get? Do you already have them? I have. Uh, yeah, I have it already, but no. I uh, love it. Yeah, so that's uh, six bucks. Sure. Hi, you guys. Well, look at you in the shade. Yes. Nicely done. Yes. Oh, it smells good. It looks so beautiful. Look at this. Thank you. Always, always. Hi, guys. Let's see all this for Jimmy. I always love your t shirt. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Oh, let me get out of your way, you got your tokens coming. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey everybody, how are you guys? Oh yeah. I got a birthday to go to have to get a gift for. Okay. So let's go ahead and give the world famous gin. Which one do you want? Uh, I think the... Um, the estate gin? Yeah, the estate gin. Okay. How are you guys? Good to see you. All right, all right. Thank you. Well, 
This is, uh, I was mentioning that this episode this week is about the history of the chocolate chip cookie. His last, yesterday was National Cho Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. I don't have a chocolate chip cookie shirt, but I have a fortune cookie yeah, shirt. Some kind of cookie. Yeah, so. <laughs> Out of their chocolate chip no! They are so good. I was hoping for that. I'm gonna have to improvise. But I also need some dregs. <laughs> we just send the drink a lot, so. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. So I heard that I ran. You guys ran out of the chocolate chip cookies. We did. Oh. So the funny thing is, is like. I was mentioning yesterday was National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Oh, was it? And so I was going. This episode is all about the history of the chocolate chip oh, cookie. So I was really awesome. hoping. So I missed out. Yeah. Oh wait. Out very Look at this. We found something. It's a lone shoe. Oh no. A lone shoe. Let's see. Whose little foot is this? We'll we'll just pull off it right here. Is that you okay? Can come around. I might have an idea who's in there. Hi, Barbara. Hey, how are you doing? Good. I was mentioning that yesterday was cho National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Oh. And so I came to get <laughs> some cookies and I, mi I, mi I yes, missed out. I got here late. Next week we did have to hit two. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're very yummy, by the way. Thank you Thanks. so much. Peanut butter at all. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like a light cookie. Okay. They're not, they're not that heavy peanut butter cookie. It's just kind of light. Yeah. It, it's, um, it's vegan, so it's got a bit of uh, coconut oil in it, too. Oh, they're okay. Nice. Can I pick up a blueberry muffin? Of course. And some of your lemon cookies here? Well, good to see you. Yeah, Next yeah. week, yeah, we'll I'll get my chocolate chip cookies. I'll, I'll yeah. be here. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll see you guys. Bye. Hey, how are you? Good. So I've seen you guys here occasionally sometimes. Like, uh, we're here about once a month. Oh, once a Usually month. That's the first it. weekend of the month. Can you tell? So I had done a whole episode on um, moonshiners and mm -hmm. bootleggers. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Westward, 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 <laughs> Westward American Single Malt Whiskey? Yeah, we're out of Southeast Portland. Uh, we do it all from scratch down there. It's all locally grown malted barley that we're uh, fermenting, brewing, and distilling ourselves start to finish. And then it's aged in charred new American oak barrels. Uh, so it's kind of distilled like a scotch and aged like a bourbon. And we've got a, a, quite a few different varieties here right now. We've got our classic single malt, a stout barrel finish, an IPA finish that we do with local breweries. Uh, we just launched a Pinot Noir cask that we're doing. This one is with Suzer Wineries, I believe. And then the really special one we have right now is uh, it's our 1,000th barrel that we did of the classic. And for this one, we are donating 100% of the proceeds to Micro Enterprise Services of Oregon, who provides uh, small loans and other forms of support for businesses and underserved communities, especially Black-owned businesses. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Doing How are you? Every time I come by, you're busy. Oh, I think it's just luck. No, 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 it's yeah. good. That's good. Yep. So, I'm still making my way through your awesome. delicious, this is delicious honey. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. it. And you're back. Yeah. Last week you weren't here, but I'm still making my way through my drunken um, uh, pecan. Oh, look at this. This is we didn't get this last time. Oh, yeah. It smells so good. Thank you. Look at that. I'm impressed what? you still have it. Most people say they eat it before they get to the car. Oh. I buy so much stuff here, so, you yeah. know. <laughs> That's good, you're supporting everyone, though. Oh, great. Businesses. So what is this flavor in here? This is our drunk pecan. So oh, so this is the one I have, okay. Yeah. I, I've sure. added it to uh, three of my salads over the week, oh, okay. so it's been delicious. Yeah. Oh, you can't tell from the video. It smells, just imagine, <gasps> sweet glazed drunken pecan nuts it smells so good the little girl said it smelled like ice cream earlier it does just sugar well oh, that's you know it's heaven you can't <laughs> thank you yeah, <laughs> can you give me a little rundown of your wonderful business and the stuff that you how you got into all this stuff this looks like a lot of stuff you're making <laughs> so, i have a whole house full of <laughs> Well, before COVID uh, hit, I was a uh, fabric retailer, fabric clothing retailer. And so um, I had all this nice We're fabric right collecting now. dust. Yeah. So I decided to make some face masks with it. And anyway, so that's 
that's how the mask thing started. And this is some beautiful, like, is it blouses and dresses? Is that what we're looking at? It is yeah, pants, dresses, tunic, kimono, over yeah. jackets, etc. Yeah. Well, we'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyway, yeah. I love your shirt with the fortune cookie. Uh, <laughs> that is the takeout. That's super fun. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that is really yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. The thing that I normally feature when I have a you yeah. know, trade show booth is like the hand dyed fabric. Ah. So like these are these are hand dyed batik rayon sarongs, <clears throat> and these are too. And what people are really attracted to about them is uh, batik is made with a wax resist uh, block print and then their the dye is hand dyed run through it. And that's how there's all these different colors like traveling through the design. Uh, yeah, my, I remember my, when I was younger my mom would do wax paintings on yeah. silk. Yeah. So kind of it's similar. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you take it through hot water and it uh, melts the wax and then what's left is what's underneath. Oh yeah. So that's how this, that's called batik and that's how this is done too. And a lot of the fabric that are used in the mass are batik, which is the same wax resist hand dye process. Nice, nice. But it makes them unique and special and yeah. Yeah. Well, very nice. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> So how did this all start? And like, what what is the like? Is it? I don't. I, I'm not it's resin familiar. Resin and wood. Resin and resin wood. Resin and wood. So, um, so this part is wood, and the clear part is resin. Mm -hmm. And what I do is actually I take scraps of wood that my brother gives me. He makes cutting boards. So I take his scraps. I combine it with resin, kind of like in a big chunk, and then I hand carve it off, oh. sand it, polish it into shapes that turn into jewelry. Nice. So I, I, I don't know if you met Nicole over there. She does her resin resins too. too. Yes. But it's different. It's interesting the, the mixture of wood and resin, yeah. and um, how toxic and how do you how do you work with the fumes? Oh, actually, the resin that I use is non toxic. Oh, okay. It's completely like earth friendly, no smell, anything which they do now. Before they didn't do that. It was really gross and smelly. Yeah. But now there's a lot of uh, non toxic stuff that's. You can play with and not kill yourself or the earth. It's kind of nice. That's fascinating. I didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah. So it's, it's very easy. It's two parts. They're like, I always tell people they're like the consistency of like honey, mm. kind of like warm honey. And you pour them together. And then after about 24 hours, they harden. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can do anything with it. Like she pours it onto things. Yeah. And I pour it next to things. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes like these rings right over here. This is all, I made uh, silicone molds. Okay. So uh, then you can pour resin in there and it pops out exactly what your mold yeah. is. So. Well, these are neat, these are neat rings right here. Yeah, those are like my little science experiment. I drop ink into resin, hmm. up, kind of upside down, and then it like, as the resin cures, it stops it because it's thick. And so it looks like, you find a good one you can actually see from the side. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Wow, that is neat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We've made these jump ropes for years, and uh, schools go low bid now, so they get the cheap stuff, um, and the kids really don't know how to jump rope with those ropes. Oh. But these are the ones that you and I used when we were in school. Yeah, yeah. And they last a long time. They got the, the weight to them, and they come in different sizes, different colors per size, or they can make whatever color combination they want. Um, the last girl that was here made a rainbow jump rope. So oh, that's that was, neat. That was left over from it. Has uh, the youngsters uh, found creating their own the more the been the? Oh, have you yeah. seen that? Yeah, because it's literally like an art class. They can create a pattern. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes they get pretty you know, involved. Yeah. But um, and there's pride to it then. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we try to make different. Uh, different patterns so they can just pick something off the rack and not have to make their own rope. But if they really are, you know, set on it, it only takes probably a minute or two. And this is great. I see that you have a height chart and then the length of rope so you can really customize it. Yes. Yeah. Could you do that? I could never do double dutch. Could you? I could never do it. Oh. 
I tried and always failed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really up to the people that are turning it. If you and I are turning the rope, you know, the people are going to be successful if we get it out of their way. Ah. If, we, if we let it go flat, you know, it's just going to hit you inside the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the so, rhythm. I mean, you'll get the timing down. But most people that don't get the timing down are just afraid of the rope hitting them, you know, as yeah. it goes around. Which unfortunately sometimes it does because the people who turn it in don't know what they're doing. So this is a, this is an old rope. It's a tester, but it's about as old as you and I. You know. <laughs> still look at it. Yeah, it's still it's still not breaking down. So it's just the quality of the, the plastic that you buy. Okay. All right. Got my uh, mask off just so I can speak a little bit more. There's nobody in front of me. Everybody's behind me. Um, I'll switch over here. Probably see the sun right in my face, but uh, I'll go sideways here. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to another episode. Um, I was hoping to get some more chocolate chip cookies at uh, Summerlin Baking Company, uh, but they were all sold out. And I'll come back next week to get my chocolate chip cookies from them too, you know, as well as Fabulicious, Fabalicious. But can't go wrong. All this wonderful stuff here at the market. Oh, hey, thanks. <laughs> With that said, uh, since the show is sponsored by my real estate services, all my contact information is below. So you can feel free to contact me if you have any questions about real estate. And in the meantime, everyone else can go to aroundtheneighborhood.tv to catch more episodes and to become a fan. Again, that's at aroundtheneighborhood.tv. And with that said, I probably have like uh, mask marks, right? Mask marks. <laughs> So I'm going to grab some food from the market and uh, meet up with a friend and uh, do our social distancing. And I hope you have a great day and I will see you around the neighborhood. Nestle started to sell the semi-sweet chocolate bars as pre-cut chunks to help bakers more easily separate the chocolate for the cookie mix. Eventually, they would produce small bits of chocolate referred to as morsels, and it wasn't until much later that be that be that they be that they be oh my god.